Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alhu here with KissAnalog.com. Today, what I want to do is I want to start a series on the Jean Haraga uh, Le Monster power supply. And it's meant to be used with Class A amplifiers. You know, 8 watt, 60 watt, or you could use Class AB, or Class D for that matter. I mean, it's just power supply, right? Anyway, it's much like this module that I bought, but it has some flexibility on how you can put it together. And it has a little bit more circuitry than this guy has. So the first video, I'm going to present it to you, show you the schematic. And the second video, tomorrow, I'll post, will be me building it. And you'll kind of see how I kind of put together and, and that. And then the third video will be the first test. We'll do an inrush current test. I'll show you some waveforms. And so it ought to be fun. So let's jump in this first video. Let's do it. Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Okay, I'm working on this Class A amplifier, the Ola 5. Okay, when I ordered that kit, I already have this uh, bulk capacitor module with rectifiers on it and this transformer. I happened to stumble on this kit from Jean Haraga. Uh, he's a designer. He's also a got some amplifiers and some power supplies to go along with these class A amplifiers and so you know it's kind of a universal power supply kit so I picked it up and the board you get a bag of parts and the PCB board the PCB board I'll show you that it came wrapped in this bubble plastic so I just wanted to show you that but uh, it's two ounce copper now just for you guys that don't know a lot of boards come standard half ounce copper. One ounce copper, pretty nice. Two ounce, pretty heavy. Now you can get four ounce or even heavier. But so two ounce is pretty decent sized board just to let you know. And this one is single sided. It's got just all the traces on this side. On this side, it does have the pads that go all the way through. So, uh, and they look like nice pads. It looks like a nice board. Uh, good board design, FR4, it seems like as far as board material. So it seems like good quality material. The, the parts, seems like there's some Wema poly caps in here, uh, some nice diodes we're gonna talk about, and uh, resistors, some heavy resistors. Let me pull it out of the kit here. So just a bunch of resistors, some LEDs and, and uh, diodes, but some good power resistors, okay? Now, the thing that's cool about this kit is physically, it's about the same size as this kit. Okay, they both come with eight capacitors, four per side. So if you have plus minus voltage rails, which we do in the audio amp, has, you know, they both come with that. This one has the rectifiers, the diodes, right here standing up on the heat sinks. These packages are dual diodes. The packages on this board same size of package but they're single diodes in this case uh, there's actually four packages so there's eight diodes since they're dual packages dual diodes per package okay so you get eight diodes but the way they wired them is they're parallel so you get a bridge rectifier here with a center tap and that's how these are arranged arranged on the board okay and you get some LEDs on the front showing you got power. You got some film capacitors on the output uh, for the output. So this guy, just a little bit more circuitry. You got your eight capacitors, but they're divided. The two capacitors on the input, you know, right off the bridge rectifier are separated from these two with the resistor, okay? I think that's like a five watt resistor that goes here, 0.1 ohm. So you get a little bit of RC filtering for the second two. I think that's a nice touch. Same thing on this side. So this board, it's like a mirror image, okay? I'm gonna show you the schematic here. Here, let me just jump down. But what I, before I do that, I, mean, I just wanna physically show you these diodes are all here, no heat sink. I think because the diodes are such large diodes and there's eight of them, four per side, they felt like they didn't need a heat sink. Now you can mount them standing up put a heat sink on them. You could flip them over, put a heat sink down on them, or mount them on the bottom side and mount them against the heat sink. So there's lots of options with this board. And I think that's the value of this kit maybe, 
because as far as cost, this kit costs about the same as this, somewhere around 40 bucks, 45 bucks maybe, uh, somewhere in that neighborhood. So this is actually more expensive because you have to buy the capacitors afterwards. I've ordered some 10 millifarad caps, the same uh, size capacitors on this, and you know they're on a slow boat. <laughs> they're good capacitors. That El they're Elna type. They're uh, it's an El Elna brand, audio grade type, 100 volt, 10 millifarads. So you know good caps. But I also have a capacitor here I want to talk about in a minute. But uh, so I think that's what I'm going to use today. So okay, let's just show you the Oh, and then. The LEDs, instead of being on the input, they're on the output side. Now, another thing on the output side, the fuses. So, if you have a problem with the amplifier or something, something causes these fuses to open, those LEDs will turn off. So, kind of nice. This one says, hey, you got power on the board, LEDs are on. This one says, hey, the fuses are open, you might have power here, but you don't have power going out. It'd be kind of nice if, if it had both cases, right? LEDs here and here, but anyway, that's some of the differences. Let me show you the schematic real quick, go through that, try to get the reflections off this board. All right, so here's the thing. Uh, okay, guys, I've titled it the All of Five Class A Amplifier Project, and this amplifier, this kit, is the Haraga, and it's called the Le Monster. Pretty cool name. <laughs> And this is a schematic of one side. Okay, that's just one side of the board. And then you got, so you double that up and you got another one. Okay, so let's just say this one gives you plus, in this case, let's say plus 35 volts out. This would be my ground. Then the other one would give me my minus 35 and my ground. And then I tie the two grounds together on the output. Okay, so you get two circuits identical. What I've shown here is three resistors okay that's what that means three parentheses uh, three one K's so that's to drain off the caps just like that I had some drainage resistors and then I showed two parentheses because this capacitor symbol represents two capacitors here this one represents two capacitors here and they're separated by these 0.1 ohm resistors so you get a little RC filtering I think that's a nice touch I like the fact you get one on each side so that you don't have a straight DC coupling connection uh, to your diode. So you get a little bit of R on each side. I, I like that. Uh, combo noise, things like that. That could maybe benefit, you know. Then you got your high frequency capacitor. And then you got your LED and your resistor. So resistor is only 1K. If I have 35 volts, I'm going to have over 30 milliamps. That's way too much. I know that some people run 10, 20 milliamps through LEDs because that's what they're rated for, but that's just too much. Uh, LED, if you look at the curves on them, once you get over one milliamp, usually that's enough. They're not going to get much brighter after that. I'll probably change that to about a 10K resistor to get about three, three and a half milliamps out of it. That's plenty. So I'll probably change that to 10K. And then we have this uh, 2.2 nanofarad with a 470 ohm resistor. Uh, it's a little high frequency snubber it looks like. And I'm not sure exactly what that's meant for. Uh, some high frequency filtering maybe. It's in parallel with this point one. It could be because it's after this fuse that maybe when the fuse opens, if you get like a little you know, spark out here, this guy dampens that. Maybe that's what it's meant for. But Anyway, it looks like a nice power supply design. So let's go ahead and build up. And we're bringing the camera over. Oh, I'm going to bring the camera over, show you the kit, and we're going to build this up. All right, guys, hey, before I bring the camera over, what I want to, I want to show you how you select your diodes and your capacitors. Uh, now, the diodes that they provide, you don't have to select them, I guess, because they provide them. And really, these diodes will work with just about any kind of power supply you want because they're rated at 600 volts reverse bias. That's plenty. Usually, on a high voltage uh, diode, you can maybe have too high a forward voltage diode. If you only need, say, 100 volts reverse protection, you don't want to go you know, six times that. In this case, we're only going to see about one volt drop forward bias. So, uh, that's not bad. So, these guys are also ultra fast or hyper fast 
depending on what vendor you choose them from, they're very fast diodes. That means that when the polarity changes, they will turn off quickly. Uh, diodes always have a little bit of reverse recovery. These will reverse recovery very quickly so you won't have uh, noise from that and, uh, and even energy lost, but not as noisy, okay? And then the Ford Current, 30 amps. They're very capable, but of course you gotta keep them cool to run current. We're not gonna need anything near that, but they're very capable devices. The temperature junction, I wrote 1.6. I, I think it's actually only 1.2. What that means is if the junction is getting hot, you only have this much voltage difference between that junction and what the case is. So if the temperature can be efficiently transferred to the case, you can heat sink it or even just air on it. It can get off the, uh, the diode. Let's say you have one volt drop in forward uh, mode. And let's say you have five amps, that could be five watts. Five watts times this, it's only gonna change less than 10 degrees if it's 1.2. So it's not very high temperature rise. So that's really good. Okay, so for capacitor options, you wanted to get a capacitor that's rated for the voltage. If I want 35 volts out here, I should have a 50 volt cap to get 70% D-rate. So 50 volts is enough. Ripple current, well, it depends on how much ripple current we're going to uh, allow through here we expect to see. So let's just say we're going to have 5 amps. Well, and that ripple current has to do with how often these diodes turn on and charge up the capacitor. So at 60 hertz here in the States, that's 16 milliseconds roughly between you know cycles. Since we've got a bridge rectifier here, we're going to flip the negative pulses up along the plus, so we get double the number of pulses. So the time is only half as much, it's about 8.3 milliseconds. All right, so let's say we're gonna expect uh, five amps current draw. So once once it, once we get a pulse to charge the capacitor, we're still gonna provide current, which is gonna drain the voltage down off that cap until the next pulse can charge it back up again. Well, in between that, we're going to get this voltage ripple. So let's just say we're going to allow 5 volts ripple. And we'll still have, say if we have 35 volts, we'll still have 30 volts. Hopefully that's enough not to change the characteristics of our amplifier. So that's the idea is we don't want to have that occur. So let's say we're going to allow 5 volts ripple. And we had 5 volts or 5 amps of current draw but I show 10 amps because we're gonna have two amplifiers, our left and our right channel. So if we use this equation here, capacitance is equal to current times change of time divided by change of voltage. That's the ripple voltage and that's the change of time. We got uh, 10 amps divided by five volts is two, two times 8.3, where that 16.6 or 16.7 uh, millifarads. So say 17 millifarads and we divide that by four because we have four capacitors we can install. So, wow, we only need, what, four, just over four millifarads per capacitor, okay? Well, I happen to have these Cornell Duplers. They're 6,800 microfarads, so they're 6.8 millifarads. So, and they're 63 volt rated. So that's plenty big. So, while I'm waiting for these other caps to come in, I can go ahead and do a test today, and I can install, I, maybe I just start off with one on each side, see what kind of ripple we get with just one installed, and then we can tack some more on. But I think we're ready to go ahead and build this board up and test it out. Now, like I said, it did come with fuses. Well, the, does, the board does have a place to put fuses. In our kit, we only got the fuse holder, so I'm gonna have to pull out some fuses and put in here, okay? But let's come over here. I'm going to show you the board, the kit real fast, and then we're going to build this thing up and run it through a test. All right, guys, let's do it. All right, guys, so what do you think of this kit? It's pretty cool, right? Um, hey, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Give the video a thumbs up if you, if you liked it. That helps with the YouTube analytics. And thanks to my patrons for the support. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month. And uh, thanks for everybody for watching the videos. Tomorrow's video, we'll put this thing together and let me know what you guys think of that. All right? 
Okay, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.